Hey, welcome to Trucks and Project Tomb Raider Rubicon. Now, if you missed last week's show, well, let me bring you up to date on what we're doing here. This is a 2003 Jeep TJ, rolled it into the shop, completely stock, and I'm basically transforming it into a rig like you saw in the movie Tomb Raider 2. Now, the reason is to show you what kind of potential these Jeeps have if you add your labor to some aftermarket parts. Now, the best part is the kid that owns this rig his name is Galen. Neither he nor his father have any idea what I'm doing to this thing. They think I'm like changing the oil or something. So they are both going to be very surprised when they not only see the Jeep, but also the big old pile of parts that we have left over. Okay, we've got this thing sitting right with four inches of lift and 35 inch tall tires. Unfortunately, we've got a lot of rubber sticking out on the sides and that brings up a couple of issues. Number one, we're going to be slinging a lot of mud and rocks down the side of the rig and also on vehicles around us. Number two, we could end up with some tickets because most states have laws about this much rubber hanging out. Now we got a solution. It's right over here on the table. These are Bushwhackers pocket style flares for the Jeep TJ. Now, as you can see, these are considerably larger than those stock flares. And they've also got these cool recessed pockets for the mounting hardware. But the big surprise here, it's how easy they go in. Check this out. All you have to do is remove the stock flares and then the new pocket flares mount right in their place using new hardware in the original holes. No drilling. The front flares go on just as easy and they also use the stock marker lights so this looks like a factory setup. As you can see those pocket flares give this Jeep a much tougher rugged look. Okay, now it is time to come inside and deal with these seats. Now the stock seats are fine for stock driving, but they leave a little bit to be desired when you're bouncing down a trail. So we definitely need something better. Take a look at this. These are the Mastercraft Rubicon suspension seats. Now, if you think this is just some sort of a plastic seat and a little bit of foam padding, oh no, think again. These are an off-road racing suspension seat, just like the off-road racers are using. Now, I know most of you have no idea what I'm talking about. So first, let's clear up what a suspension seat is and why they're so good. Now, most seats are some sort of a shell that use foam padding or springs to absorb shock. Problem is, if you hit hard enough, you're gonna bottom out. You're gonna feel it all through your body, especially in your kidneys. A suspension seat, it's got a perimeter frame, then you have this suspension liner that's stretched over it and tied down. Now this basically suspends between the frames. Then your foam is on top of that. Of course, you sit on top of the foam. Now basically, since you are suspended in air, kind of like a hammock, well, you don't bottom out when you hit bumps. You just kind of float along with them. So these are extremely comfortable when you're driving down the road and the only thing to be planted in when you're bouncing around off-road. These are the same kind of seats that Ivan Stewart and Walker Evans, Kurt Ledoux have been crossing finish lines with for over 30 years. Now the Rubicon style seat got the adjustable headrest, adjustable lumbar support, and you've got the slots cut for your five point harness if that's what you're going to use. So now all we have to do is put them in. This is how to do it. First we'll unbolt the seat from the floor, then Remove it from the vehicle. Now we can learn a few things about Galen. All right, looks like uh, he spills a few things while he drives. Obviously, he likes Doritos. Um, looks like he wants to be a golfer. And obviously, he really stinks at it. <laughs> Then unbolt the seat from the riser and we can add the seat to the swap meet pile. Since we definitely want our passenger side seat to still tip forward so people can get in the back, you're going to want to relocate this cable from over here where it was originally over to this side. Now it just presses into this existing tab and that's it. Then install these studs that come with the kit, slide on some spacers got a seat belt adapter and then you've got this little arm grease it up here in the center you hook the cable to that put it on now you're ready for your seat
All right, those new front seats are ready to go in, but first I'm gonna deal with this rear seat because now is the perfect time to do it while you still have the fronts out. Now it is super simple because Mastercraft has got these covers. You just slide over it and they're held in place with zippers and Velcro. And this not only lets you retain your stock fold and tumble rear seat, but look at this. It's gonna make it match those new front seats perfectly. To install the bottom part, just lay the material over the cushion, tuck it in here and back, and along the sides, and up underneath in front. Then flip the seat forward, zip it up, and work out the wrinkles. The seat back is even easier because it just slides down over and then fastens with Velcro underneath and that is it. Now just like with any upholstery work though, it's a lot easier if you do this when the material's warm. Once the rear seat's done, all we have to do is bolt on these front seats and then step back and take a look at this. <laughs> these are awesome! And they not only look a thousand times better, this is a far superior seat all the way around. Now, for those of you that think we've lost a little functionality, look at this, you still slide, flip the lever, tilts forward, you can still get people and junk back here into the back. This is sweet. Now, that takes care of the seat install and brings us up to a break, but don't go far because when we come back, I'm gonna show you how to stay in these seats even if you're upside down. We'll be right back. These are great. Hey, we're back. Now what I'm working on here is a 2003 Jeep TJ. I'm calling it Project Tomb Raider. Now the reason for that was there was a really cool Jeep in the Tomb Raider 2 movie. And most people think, oh, that was a one-off, hand-built rig, totally unobtainable. Well, the fact is, most of the parts on it are available in the aftermarket. So, the purpose for this build-up is to show you how to build something that's just as cool, even more functional than what you saw in the movie. All you do is add aftermarket parts to your time and your sweat. Now, of course, the fact that the kid that owns this Jeep has no earthly idea what I'm doing to it just makes it that much more fun. When we left off, I had just finished installing these new suspension seats. Now we're going to move on to an area where a lot of people make mistakes, and that is in the restraint system, because they think these stock belts are going to do the job. No. Now, your stock belts are great when you're driving down the road, and notice they're compatible with these new seats. This is really nice. But when you go off-road, these are not going to get it. And the reason being, these stock belts were designed to protect you in an accident but they will do absolutely nothing to hold you in that seat when you're driving along on an off-camber situation or going down a very steep hill or if you happen to roll over. Now, you might get lucky and catch a lock, but nine times out of 10, you're gonna get upside down and slowly fall out of your seat. <laughs> it's not a good thing. So, you need to upgrade your restraint system and Mastercraft has those systems. Let's take a look at it. This is your basic five-point harness. You got your big three-inch wide lap belt, quick release latch, then to that, you add your shoulder harnesses, and here is your anti-submarine belt. Goes down between your legs, keeps you from sliding out from underneath. Now, most people will never use a complete five-point harness. You just don't need it. Most wheelers will start with the lap belt, and then as they get a little wilder, a little crazier, maybe do some racing, they'll add the shoulder harnesses. But no matter what you do, you need to know how to put these in right so they work properly. Now this is how to do it. All right, to mount the lap belts, all you do is drill down through the floor and mount the hardware that comes with the kit. Now notice it comes with a big washer for the back side so that bolt doesn't pull out through the floor when you need it the most. Then, of course, your belt just runs up through the seat and holds you in place. All right. Let's deal with some of the misconceptions that people have about restraint systems. First of all, your lap belt. That is your main belt. This is what's gonna hold you in this seat. Your shoulder harnesses are what keep you from pitching forward and having a bad encounter with the dash. 
Unfortunately, the biggest mistake that people make with shoulder harnesses is that they bolt them right down to the floor. Oh no, no, bad, bad. Now the reason being is as you pitch forward, that's gonna line your spine right up with that mounting point. So as you pull against the harness, it's gonna pull back and it's gonna compress your spine which can rupture discs, do all kinds of stuff that's just as bad as hitting the dash. So, to mount your shoulder harnesses, you want your mounting point to be right behind the seat, or at least a pivot point like this. So you pull horizontal. Unfortunately, on most vehicles, that means you're gonna have to mount some sort of a bar behind the seats to mount that harness, which means it does away with your rear seat, pretty much. Now, since this is not a hardcore vehicle yet, and Galen's still gonna wanna use his back seat some, we're gonna wait on that until he's ready to go to that step. Hey, welcome back. You know, one of the challenges that you face when you custom build vehicles is to not only build something that's different, but also build something that's useful and hopefully makes a design statement that no one's ever done before. That is a tough order. Well, that's what the guys at Bully Dog Technologies had in mind when they came up with the idea for a truck called Bold Elegance. Well, the very first thing that came to us was the thought of designing the sides to, to fold down, to give a new presence in the market, something that hopefully no one else had ever thought of. So the first thing they did was get a 2003 Ford F-250 Super Duty, which of course is packing the Power Stroke diesel, then they took it over to Alton Company Incorporated and let the cutting begin. I kind of took a look at this. I didn't realize it was something so complicated until showing me this pick up the box sides coming down like, whoa. Now the Ford was already long with its extended cab, but that's not near long enough for a tailgate party. So the truck was stretched and stretched until a full-size door could be added in front of the stock rear door making this a six-door rig. But that was still not enough, so 12 inches was also added behind the rear door. All of this stretching opens up huge interior space where people can sit inside if the weather's bad and just kick back in the cool leather seats, crank up the custom stereo, or just look out of the dual moonroofs. Now long is one thing, but tall is also important especially for a 4x4. So, this rig is rolling on a Kelderman Air Ride suspension that's controlled by Dakota Digital. And that lets you go from four to eight inches of lift with just the flick of a switch. That way, you can take the party out of the parking lot, off the road, to the river, lake, mountain, whatever scenic spot you want to enjoy the party at. And getting stuck shouldn't be a problem, but getting dirty might be. All right, up to now, the truck seems fairly normal. Normal, that is, until you get to your destination, start flipping some switches. Then, you better hold on. First, the tonneau cover. It lifts straight up, as in vertical. Now, this not only allows headroom, but it also shields you from the sun or the rain. Then, hydraulic rams kick in, and the bed sides rotate and lower until they lay flat down to act as tables or benches or a stage for dancers. Hey, it just depends on how crazy you want your party to be. Now this isn't all just hacked together. Now all the edges are metal finished, the wheel wells are finished out with leather, so as crazy as it may sound, this all looks like a factory option. Of course, no tailgate party is complete without food and drink, and a swing out grill will make sure nobody goes away hungry. And a cooler makes sure nobody goes away dry, at least before halftime. And speaking of halftime, if you want to watch the tube, now just flip a switch and the rear window drops down, revealing dual TV screens in back of the cab so you can keep in touch with how your team is doing or who's winning the race. The Bully Dog Jaguar. Now, like I said before, this rig is packing a Power Stroke diesel for a couple of reasons. Well, we felt like the heavy-duty diesel pickups needed a presence in the sport utility market. And also, it's the perfect platform for Bully Dog to put on their own diesel performance parts 
that you've not only seen me install on the show, but also that you can get for your own truck. Things like the Watchdog computer control system, their high flow air intake, and of course, who can forget their awesome propane injection and nitrous kits that will make a diesel engine really stand up and bark. All of that allows this big old monster to boil the hides with the best of them. As you can see, this, this is an amazing vehicle. So amazing, in fact, that it won the Ford Design Award at the SEMA show this year. And that is impressive. So, does that mean that Ford's going to build some of these? Nah, not anytime soon. Unfortunately, the only way that you get to experience the Bold Elegance truck is to make really good friends with the guys at Bully Dog. And that means you get to stock that little refrigerator a lot. You know, a lot of the parts that we feature here on the show can be a little expensive, like that engine. Now, while that's really cool and you usually get what you pay for, sometimes it's kind of nice to see some parts that are cheap and do what they say they're going to do. For example, this Fram Extra Life air filter. Now, what does it do? Well, it's got special fibers inside the filter element and it filters out more dirt than other filters, which means cleaner air goes in the engine, which means the engine runs better and lasts longer. It's that simple. And the cost? Just about what you paid for that greasy burger and fries you had for lunch. Now, when you're spending the kind of money that you are for this type of engine, that kind of money is a wise investment. The greasy burger and fries? Well, that's up to you. Speaking of keeping clean air in your engine, you four-wheeler guys know that that can be a little tough, especially if you play around in the water, because the water is always deeper than you think it is. So how do you keep from drowning out? Very simple. You install a safari snorkel from Quadratech. Now this allows you to relocate your air intake out of the engine compartment, up the side of the vehicle, to up over the top of the windshield frame, which puts it above the driver's head, which means you are going to have trouble breathing long before the engine does. Now the kit includes the snorkel, the hosing, all the hardware, and the cutting templates that you're going to need to put this in. Yes, you need to cut a hole in the side of your rig, but if you're going to do any kind of deep water crossing or if you just want to keep cool, fresh air coming down into your engine, give Quadratech a call and get you a snorkel. 